Chrissy here. Um, yes, there's been a, a couple of little changes around the, the desk area and stuff. So I've been finally getting into sorting out my study somewhat. Um, there's still lots going on. So, um, Saturday morning, day after Good Friday. It's still Good Friday in the US, so bless, um, blessings to you over there. Got lots of different things to look at. Look at this. This is my notes for things that we can look at today. Um, wow. Um, look, despite this ISIS group coming out, I still I still get a feeling of false flag around the um, Moscow theatre attack. I could be wrong. That's just what I get is a feeling like it's it's not really that. Like, you claim it, we'll pay you for claiming it type of thing, but it really wasn't them. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to have a quick look at that. Is... The attack at the theatre in Moscow, was it a false flag? What have we got here? Got a card there that wasn't. This is the Steampunk um, Tarot by Saroya Rose, an Australian um, psychic. Oh, my hubby's making a few noises. Don't worry about that. Was it a false flag operation? So let's have a look. I'm just going to do one card. Wheel of Fortune. Well, that is... In the yes, no rule, that's a, a yes card. Okay. There we go. <laughs> um, designed to bring about a change. There have been reports of this attack bringing out Russian neo-nationalists, we'll call them neo-Nazis, Hi, Flora. It's lovely to see you here. And come here, sweetheart. Come here. Do you want some nummies? It's designed to, it's more to it than just that. It's really designed to make Russians afraid. It's, yeah, I... It could all be wrong. I could be wrong, but I just cannot shake this false flag feeling about all of this. So let's hope I'm proved that it's, it's proved to be wrong. But yeah, but it's it's brought about change, and I think it was designed to bring about change, to stir up people, to cause internal troubles. Okay, I'm going to have a look at the governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, who quite a few other readers have said this is an important man in the Republican Party. He is a future leader for the party. So...
he harks back, I think, of the true Republican. Hi, Patricia Franzino. Hello. So he harks back to the true Republicans, the Republicans who are there to do their job, not to line their pockets. He harks back to a time of bipartisanship and um, a real belief in the Constitution. Not that I know much about this man. This is just what I am getting coming into my head about him. So concentrating on where's more, let's have a look at him. Seven of Cups. This is, there's an air of mystery. Yeah, mystery, confusion. I think there's, this is about mystery, some confusion about the need to make right choices, but also the need to take risks in your choices um, and not letting you be gaslighted or others be gaslighted by people about you. So this is him saying, I refuse to confuse issues. I, I will show clear choices, be more transparent, I guess. Um, and I refuse to let those who want to bring down democracy gaslight my reputation and the work I do. He's very firm in his belief there. And the sevens are about taking risks as well. So he's willing to take some risks. in order to wipe away any illusions and delusions around him. Governor Moore, the Eight of Cups, what his challenges, and this is people not understanding that he wants to reach for more, not just for himself, of course he does, but he wants the party to achieve more and it can't do it in the way it is. So he's got people who will walk away from supporting him and all that. So he's challenged to keep those pe people and make them see his vision of rebuilding the Republican Party as to what it could be. He's not happy to leave things as they are. He thinks that they can do more and achieve more by rebuilding and doing the hard work, but most of them there are just lazy. So his challenge is keeping people interested and stopping them from turning away from him and his visions. The advice for him is, this is very much emotion centered because here we have cups again. It's the page of cups, his appeal to those patriotic emotions and not bring a message of hope and inspiration 
with the Page of Cups. And start building that message more and more sooner rather than later. And be inspirational. Get your voice heard more and more. These are minor arcana. I don't think a lot of this is even really firmly in his subconscious yet. Hi, Dean. How are you? Hi, Clarence. At the base of this, he's seeing the Republican Party as being pushed in, painted into a corner. And he, he, at the moment, he's trying to find a way to get them out of that. But this is what he's seeing and this is what he wants to. He wants to help navigate the Republican Party out of the corner it's backed itself into. And that's all he is. Uh, he does have greater aspirations for the future. But at this stage... The next few years, he's just concentrating. I think he's concentrating and trying to rebuild the party. Yes, I'm quite well. Bit snuffy, but it's that time of year here. Uh, heading, it's our autumn, I suppose, and we have two hay fever seasons. This is one, so bit snuffy, yeah. Now, the outcome for him, his main outcome is the Queen of Pentacles. That is having the resources coming to him, um, being able to have the resources to do what he needs. So that is going to happen. So what adds to this outcome? Temperance. He's Okay, he's going to be finding those people who have that balance that is needed to bring the Republican Party into basically the 21st century and to break it away from the corruption of the last 40 years of the 20th century and the, well, the last 40 to 50 years actually. Um when it really started to take a grip was actually closer to the end of the century, Newt Gingrich. But the rot had started to set in, but, yeah, when this man stepped in, it was just like, no, nah, there was no stopping it. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Don't do honey tea because I am diabetic and even though I'm pretty slack about it, I know that diabetic honey is a big no-no. Now, okay, what else is going to be adding to this outcome? Well, we've got the balance, finding the, the people that have the right balance of ambition, loyalty, but also core values. And but like the older core values, this is a good card. This is a light at the end of the tunnel. So it's been going to be still a, be a bumpy few years, but I do feel that under his leadership, and he is going to be a leadership figure, that there will be some light at the end of the tunnel. I'm thinking maybe close to closer to 2030 he might put up his hand for 2032. Yes, and what is going to be found is that if people put their trust in this man to bring about, and he's not going to be doing it all on his own, but to bring the Republican Party back into the fold as a,
real power, not a disruptor, but a rebuilder, they will be justified in their choice because justice is very important to him. But real justice, not it's only justice if it's if the Republican Party want it to happen, if the Democratic Party want it to happen, then, of course, it's not justice. No, he's not that sort of a thinker. So putting their trust in him will, as a leader, will be justified. Looking out, I did mention 2032. Will the party have rebuilt enough to, to have a solid chance in 2032? Page of Wands. That is creativity, speaking to others, building a new foundation. They will have that foundation there. This is a good card. People will start listening to them seriously as a contender. Whether they will win is another thing, but people will start hearing the new messages from the party by then. Oh, doesn't he make you? Yes, he does, doesn't he? Going after a judge's daughter, I mean... But if they try and pull him up on that it, it's just going to waste time and delay things so yeah mm. Rudy Giuliani is not going to be able to keep his 3.5 million dollar condo in Florida he's asked that it becomes that he get to keep it because, you know, with the bankruptcy proceedings and all that, because it's where he does his podcast done. Oh, come on, buddy, you can hire a podcast booth downtown. Um, no, you won't be able to keep it. <laughs> okay. Has anyone got a question? Hi, Leslie. Haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. I hope all is well. I'm just going to swap my glasses over, guys. Um, thank you very much. Um, I was not up to doing my Tuesday tea, tea on Tuesday evening. <laughs> I was just feeling so cooked by the time I got home. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, housekeeping tomorrow morning, of course, will be the Members Only Live. I'll do a Members Only at Open House too. It is the last day of... March, so I'll do an open house as well. So after I do the live from 10 to 10.30, I will be doing a members only open house. So if you are a member, go to the comments. I'll do the live and then because I do it on a thing that start, you can book a, a stream to start at a certain time. But I just go and grab it and do it. Um, keep an eye out. And you'll see the link to the open house there in the members only comments. Okay. So, has anyone got a question? I've got one. 
Viktor Orban, he days as the leader of Hungary coming to an end. The two of pentacles, things are not as steady and as balanced as he likes to think they are. Juggling and manipulation. This is the Steampunk deck by Soroya Rose, if you're interested. He is coming into a time of chaos with the Knight of Swords. And it's just going to come out of nowhere. There's not going to be any warning. If there was warning of upcoming chaos, I'd say it'd probably be the Page of Swords, but no. <sighs> And the Seven of Wands. Oh, that's right. This guy always reminds me of Ashton Kutcher. Um, the face, not necessarily the bod, but it just reminds me of Ashton Kutcher, the actor. Um, serious looking Ashton Kutcher, but still. Um, <clears throat> seven of Wands. Stand in defense of himself. So will he survive? Will he survive? Will his government survive? Victor Orban. Going to have things happening very, very quickly with the government. Might survive? Yes or no? One last yes or no. Will his government survive? King of Cups might, might survive. But there's, it has to get US backing, I feel. Will the US back him? I don't know. Probably not. Okay. Now, Russia, now the UN has sanctions in place against North Korea and every year they renew the vote to, hi Annie, to, to have increased surveillance on North Korea to ensure those sanctions are being, you know, working and being taken seriously and stuff. So the UN Security Council went out to vote on renewing it again for another 12 months and Russia vetoed it, which means not happening. Is this a sign of future... of future... Um, Support between North Korea of a future relationship between North Korea and Russia. The chariot. That's a yes. Movement towards that. And there's going to be some major movement. Queen of Pentacles. There's definitely something about resources here, possibly military. Some of the military might of North Korea being sent to Russia, possibly. That's what I feel will be interesting to watch out for. Now, there's been a little bit of tension, apparently, between Cuba and the US in the relationship there. I only saw a very quick thing about the story. It was about some music 
or something happening to some music festival. But apparently there's been a bit of a raise in, rise in tensions between the two countries. Here we've got the Seven of Swords flew out. Strategies, risks, a feeling of someone getting away with stuff. The feeling of stolen. Um, so uh, is it in for a bit of a rocky patch, that relationship? Yeah, there's going to be some enter into a new phrase, this relationship. But whether or not it's a better phase or is it a phase of deterioration five of pentacles yeah it's going to enter into a new phase and i feel like there's going to be a, a bit of a cooling off of the relationship between the two for a while so this is the change driven by i think some resentment and it's going to lead to a period of cooling off good news is this is a, a minor arcana so it's not years and years and years, but a couple of years, a bit of a cooling of the relationship between Cuba and the US. Does anyone have a question for me? Let's swap the decks over now. Pamela Bryant, nobody ever has to apologise if they're running late or they haven't been around for a while. I'm asking you to spend your time with me and hope that you like, that you want to and you like doing it. But it's understandable that not everyone can always come and join or at a time or... You know, so that's okay. Hello, Becky Stone. Yes, I do feel they will recover everybody who was lost. I, I said to James, there's, I feel there's more than just the workers who were lost. Um, I feel there might be more. I do feel there are still some people down there to be found. Um was very fortunate that the Mayday got out and they had time to stop traffic, but there was quite a bit of traffic. There was still traffic on the bridge at that time and I, they will eventually find everyone, but I do feel that it might raise the total, um, will, will raise Blessings and prayers to all of those who lost loved ones there. Yes, there were. I said the figure, look, I think there might be more than 20 to my husband, but I hope I'm wrong. Okay. But... Yeah. Truth Social going to collapse. Let's have a look. How will we see justice for Alien Cannon? Okay. What is justice for her? Well, it's being removed from the bench. The Four of Water, the Four of Cups, this dissatisfaction is growing. Really, really growing.
the sun. This is things coming to light. I, I get the, the story of Icarus here, flying too close to the sun, overconfident and flying too close to the sun and causing him to fall to his doom. Glaring, glaring things. And then the eight of fire, which is the eight of wands. Actually, relatively quickly. Hmm. So there's going to be big revelations, revelations soon. And then relatively quickly, so possibly in the next couple of months. Hi, Dennis Thomas. Thank you. I hope you're doing well and welcome. Hi, Shelby Lisa. Hi, Steve. Will SCOTUS finish destroying voting rights and everything else they touch? No, Clarence, they won't. Um, I'm just going to close my eyes here. Show me what's going to happen with Scotus. We've got the three of water. This is a card of support. Three of cups and celebration. So there's going to be some celebration. And the three of fire. Now this is, as you put out, so it comes back to you. Consequences. Consequences of your actions. So their actions coming back to haunt them. And this is another three. And then the eight of water. Eight of cups walking away. Abandonment walking away. So I do feel that there's going to be possibly three, three judges off the SCOTUS bench in the course of this year, possibly. The Eight of Cups, the Eight of Water here. This deck, in case you're wondering, is the Caro of the Sorceress, a Witch's Wheel of the Year. And it's by Berengeri de Monsi. Or Berengeri. Um, yeah. <coughs> Hi, Grandma D. Hi, Mickey. Okay. Yes, we're having a quiet Easter. Um, not doing too much. I'll be down at his friends tomorrow for Easter Sunday. It's just a nice quiet day. I'll watch the football and... Bubby, what are you doing, sweetheart? Hi, Sherry French. 
Mm. I don't think Cameo is too happy with the changes I've instituted. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Pope Francis missed the skip, skipped the Good Friday service at St. Peter's Basilica. Ah, of Fayette County, Pennsylvania. Yep. So, is Pope Francis ill? What is happening with Pope Francis? We'll do three cards. Nine of water. That's the wish come true card. Wish fulfillment card. Nine of earth. That is in control, in autonomy. But then we have the moon. Hidden things. It's interesting because they've got the Lancelot's wife. The Lady Elaine, is it? Merlin, the curse has the curse is upon me, cried the Lady of Shalot. Um The Nines Almost full circle. Water, ills, panacea, elixirs. They're treating him, but I think they've come about as far as they can to treat him. Um, he has asked back for control. So I think he has says no more. Things will be as they be with the moon. Um, yeah, I don't think he's well. I won't read on never whether or not he will pass soon. He passes when he passes. Um, I think his efforts will definitely add to getting rid of them. But there's also some other people's added efforts. Uh, Pamela Bryant. Hi, sweet pea. Yeah, so he's not well. Yeah, they are keeping things hidden from the public. He's asked for some dignity. I think he's asked for some dignity. Um, so there is going to be some big news with him soon. But, yeah, I won't. don't know when, but it is. Um, this is a major time for him. And they are keeping some stuff from the public at his request. Okay. Will the next Pope be even more progressive? Now, while I was asking that, a card flew out. The Knight of Water, the Knight of Cups. Offering more. the devil yeah I'm getting I asked will the next Pope be in more progressive more enlightened than Francis is he may appear so at first but he's still tied very much to the old ways 
so not the beacon of hope for progression for that church that people hope for. Now, Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy Jr., or the third, whatever he is, RFK, he's running as an independent. Mick Mulvaney said, oh, he's running as an independent. It's going to impact the election for Biden and cost him the election. Is this true? RFK. I don't feel it's going to have much impact, but let's see what the deck says. Three cards on this. Justice. The High Priestess. Hmm. And then the Seven of Cups, Seven of Waters, Illusion. Okay. Because there's this feeling, oh, he's Kennedy, he's going to attract a lot of Democrats. No, that's not quite the case. This High Priestess, there's no reversals in this deck, but I feel like it should be reversed. A shallowness and a conceitedness. Um, if he was working for the good of America, he would have remained with the Democratic Party. So he, the doubts of him are justified. He's doing this more for himself. But he's going to be facing a few delusions. This, um, people see through that. Will he take some Democratic votes? Probably, but not that many. Not that many. But not enough to make a difference. Um... The hermit. After this, he's going to fade away and you won't really hear from him again. Okay. Truth social. Is it going to collapse? I don't, I don't see a complete collapse, but it's never going to be a big deal. It's probably going to be absorbed rather than collapsed. Five of Earth. So, yeah, it's always going to be a bit of an outside thing. Out in the cold, it's never going to be the big success he wants it to be. The seven of fire, seven of wands, going to have to stand and defend itself towards oncomers. I see it mostly being absorbed by a larger company and in the nine of earth, yeah, um, a, a bigger power here. Um, so somebody else has their hands on the rain and it's just going to, I think it's just going to fade away really. I I can't going through my head. RFK feels like the Democratic Party should have protected his grandfather. He blames them for his loss of his power. 
Yep. <laughs> no, they're not gonna. They're, they're not gonna do anything. No, they won't be doing that. They don't. They don't want to be spending money on that sort of stuff. Now, the next thing I've got to read on, the Prime Minister of Poland, Donald Tusk, has come out and said, look, Europe, we are entering a pre-war era, similar to that of before the Nazis, the Germans started all their antics. But, of course, in this case, it is with Russia as the aggressor. And he says... The countries around Poland and everything, they need to bolster the defences. Is he correct? Is Donald Tusk correct? Yes. That quite simply the answer unfortunately he is correct will NATO the UN will they step up to help um, de-escalate this situation Three of water, yes. Eight of earth. Yes, they will do the work. They will do work hard and with others. But it is going to be a very unsettled time for quite a while here. It's... But there are other countries that aren't NATO and so it's this era of you can't trust the aggressors. So, other, yes, there will be moves made, but it's interesting that the threat is, even though there's support and all that, their minor arcana, and the threat's still a major arcana. So it's a threat that could overwhelm efforts easily if vigilance isn't kept. Yeah, again, they can't half ass it with the Knight of Cups, okay? They have to be full-on committed to avoid this. Now, another question. I saw a headline, a heartbreaking photo of a little little boy from Gaza. He just just showing his back, and it's just skeletal, skin draped over bones. There's famine conditions in Gaza. Heartbreaking to see, but should not be ignored as much as we would like to close our eyes and just say, no, no, it's not happening. Um, will the US and its allies, and that includes Australia, we should be pulling our finger out a bit more than we do. Yeah, oh, yeah, Annie, I, I saw your question. I will have a quick look at Melania, yeah. Um, but will Australia... US allies do something, not just be able to do something, but will they do something um, about these famine conditions?
five of water, five of cups. There's no time to cry over how this happened. They have to start doing things. Yes, so we've got the Justice card. Justice is a double-edged sword. That means in order to get something real done to assess these conditions, they're going to have to confront Israel. Six of Fire, yes, they will do something. This is the Six of Wands, this is card of victory, of validation. So, yes, they will do something, but they have to get started sooner rather than later. Yes, I think Poland will. Yeah. I think Poland will ask for assistance. Now, quick look at Melania, hey? Um, let's just grab a different deck here for that. Liz Cheney is going to come back into the picture. I think she will work with Wes Moore, and I'm hoping Adam Kinzinger will too. So let's see. Now, Melania, three cards on her. Knight of Wands, Ace of Pentacles, Temperance, yep. Um, she's waiting for the right time. She's waiting for that opportune moment, basically. And yet she has started mixing all the ingredients together so she can step away and live a life that she thinks is her due. And find a new balance in her life so yeah she's holding back for the right opportunity yeah she's a gold digger she's a gold digger you know um yeah Now, the next question I have, how much longer does Benjamin Netanyahu, BB, and you remember I'm always really, really reluctant to read on this guy because, you know, singe cattail, um, no fires lit, <laughs> no candles lit at the moment. Um, how much longer does he have in government? He's trying to, he's had um, a thing he did to subsidise um, the, oh, what is it? Now, there are ultra-Orthodox men are exempt from enlistment in the military, okay, for their mandatory army service. Haredi, who are allowed to continue full-time Torah study and live on government stipends. But Bibi wants to be able to draft these soldiers in. This is not going over well, these men in. This is not going over well. So, 
my girl, my baby girl cameo for those who are new. She rules. What do you got there, baby? Oh, you got a little bit of an owie? Yeah, you got a little owie. Oh. Let's see if we can put some cream on that for you later. Hmm? Have you got much longer in government? Seven of fire is in a defensive position. He's finding himself in more and more of a defensive position. The four of earth, the four of pentacles, yeah, insecurity. He's got to make he's finding it hard to find that balance between going too hard and not pushing hard enough. But for him, it's always overspend, overkill. And it's being creating instability in his government. The king of fire. New leadership is coming. Six fire. Yep. New leadership is coming and it will be validated leadership. Hmm. When no major arcanas have come up as yet and still no major arcanas, the king of earth, I think there's going to be a... period of stability brought about by other leaders. I would say probably within the next 12 months, even possibly before the end of the year, he'll be gone. Okay, has anyone else got a question for me? I've gone through my list and answered some questions. Anyone else got a question? Because I'm going to start in on the single card reads. So if you are new here, I hear you to put your hand up and say, card please, or put a wavy hand up, and I'll write your name down and I read one card for you. Yes, okay. So put your hands up, guys. Find a place to write names down here. Yeah. So we have Leslie King. And if you get one every week, you know, just uh, give other people a chance this week, hey? Um, Pamela Bryant. Mickey, Steve, who else would like a single card read? All right, I'm going to start, but if you want a single card read, put your hand up. We've got all, almost half an hour, so Becky Stone. And I'll write your name down as I see him. So 
Sherry French. So, start off with Leslie King. Guides, what can you tell me? What messages do you have for Leslie? Ego. You're not in as tight a spot as you think you are, monkey. Yeah? Um, you made a couple of wrong moves, a couple of not the best choices. Um, if you just say, okay, yep, this is the decision I made that was wrong. This is where I went wrong. So accept that decision that you made. Um, you can then think back to what other choices were available and move towards them. Okay. So, yeah, it might seem like the decisions you've made recently have landed you in a bit of hot water, but they are reversible decisions and they can get you out of the bind you feel you're in because it's not really as big a bind as you feel. But it is a big lesson to learn. Being a major arcana, it's about big lessons here. So you won't make, basically, you won't make that mistake again. But there is a way to reverse the mistake that's been made. You just have to accept that you made it and do that. Okay. Um, Leslie King, that's Leslie. Pamela Bryant. What have you got? What have we got for Pamela Bryant? Well, this one you can reverse, but you have to go back and realise where you made it, okay? Pamela Bryant, the Queen of Wands. I'm really honing in on the need for balance. It says here between career and personal life, but I, I feel it's more like, because I think you're retired, Pamela, is that correct? I think it's more like <clears throat> finding that balance between what you dream of doing and what in reality you can do. So between that ideal dream and the reality of what you can do. But don't let the reality of what you can do take away your passion for what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I feel this is more to do with your personal passions than working, but part-time job as a farmer, that that's... Good. That, I think that's important to you. But I feel this is like more on the personal hobby side, whatever. Um, nothing wrong with dreaming big as long as you dream practical as well. <laughs> um, believe in yourself. But find that balance. And that way you will be able to do more than you would have if you just stuck to the grand scheme, if that makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mickey. Hi, Celtic Sia. Hi, Patricia Franchino. Did I not say hello earlier? I, I thought I had, but yep. Nikki. 
You've got the Page of Swords. Young, enthusiastic, logical, insightful, perhaps a bit too blunt. Um, I'm feeling like the excitement of a new um, challenge or the excitement of a new venture, but there's still a need to really, really be careful and and perceptive and rev review or document with a new venture very clearly, very carefully. But... Um, Yeah, it's a sweet card. It's a sweet card, Mickey. Um, sometimes excitement can overtake intellect. So just make sure you rein in the excitement a little bit, okay? <laughs> yeah, a little bit too blunt, yeah. M. Steve... You're lurking, okay. Steve, about about eighty percent of what you're worrying about, you don't need to worry about, my darling. Okay, things will work out fine. Just give it up to the universe, and you'll be able to sleep better. Um, and you will be able to handle. The 20%, that is a real concern. Okay, so just know that. The, the other 80% that seems to be crowding in on your brain, there's nothing that can be done about that. Give it up to the universe and trust that it will all be okay. Uh, because it will. Okay, so, you know, I can't sleep at night. Tossing and turning that song. There's no need to toss and turn. Focus on the 20% of what you perceive as the issues at the moment that you can deal with and resolve with in the other 80%. And it all seems to be minutiae stuff will just resolve itself, Okay. There you go. Becky Stone. The world this is a good time for you to make some moves that maybe you've been putting off to make some major changes in your life leading up to this top point you've learned some harsh lessons my dear but take the wisdom and the knowledge from those lessons because you will be taking them into the future with you and this is a very good move. Becky, this next period of life is a time for you. It's a time for joy in your life. It's in time for enlightenment. And be proud of yourself for coming through and surviving some of the lessons that were thrown at you. You deserve the good things that are going to come from this next stage of your life because this is the end of one journey cycle leading into the start of a new one. 
and what you learnt this time around will really help you and add to the success of the next phase of your life. So that was Becky Stone, Sherry French. The Five of Swords. Yeah. This is a cautionary tale. Okay. There are better ways to do things. There are always better ways to do things than by pulling the rug out, out from under people. Um, it's not your tendency to do that, but I, I get a feeling of desperation. So just get back, take a deep breath. And, I've, yeah, it's definitely got avoid people who lack integrity or who have questionable motives. So if something is not working out, make that decision. Okay. But notice is important. Okay, put someone on notice. <laughs> you meant thank you. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it can be a bit, you, you don't realise you've missed a couple of letters or or, or a wrong letter's been put in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, does anyone else want a, a, a card? Yeah, if you want a reading, I do do readings. Now, they're one-hour readings. Around Christmas and stuff, I have specials for half-hour readings. But normally they're one-hour readings and they're $30 US or the equivalent in whatever currency you use. And you get an hour with me and it's face-to-face. -face. I use Jitsi Me. So... I mean, I, I can do a email reading for you, but I do charge a little bit extra for that because it entails a lot of typing, a lot of, you know, extra work there. So I charge a bit extra for that. Um, but if you do want a reading, you can email me at footprinttarot at gmail.com. Okay. Um. I use PayPal for payment. Yeah. Um So that last bit of housekeeping, 10 o'clock tomorrow, 10 o'clock to 10.30, members only live. So please come and join me if you want. And then the open house. So if you are a member, you'll go to the members' comments about a little bit after 10.30, give me five, 10 minutes, to set up the open house, and you will see a comment and it will say, press on the link to join the open house. Press on the link, it'll take you to Jitsi Me, and then you press the join button. And this gives you opportunity to talk face to face to other, you know, other members and myself and ask questions. Um, I try to make it fun. If you do join me for a members only read, I also, <laughs> I also, you get, I do an oracle card for you. And the first thing I do in the members only read is I do an archangel message for the following week. 
Okay. Um, and if nobody else wants a, a, a card, I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Thank you, Cameo. Oh, you want this, sweetie. There you go. With the nummies. I'm going to wrap it up for the day <laughs> if nobody else wants a card. Um, and please take care of yourself. Look after each other. Stay strong. Stay healthy. Stay loving. And above all, my darling, stay laughing. Laugh every day. And if you can, laugh with a stranger. I love you all. And um, we'll see the members tomorrow. And hopefully I'll be doing um, a Tuesday tea on Tuesday night, just see how I pull up. But I might, I might do something on Easter Monday. Don't know yet. Okay. Bye-bye. Love you all. Have a great Easter.